Awesome. So this call is to talk about ABCI++ and the integration of the first two phases. So um, we're going to talk about the integration of prepare proposal and process proposal. Um, we coincidentally named BASAP, BASAP++ in, in lieu of ABCI++ um, since we still don't have a BASAP 1.0. Um, and that was the original motivation for ABCI++. So uh, Thank you everyone for joining. Um, I think everyone here for the most part knows each other. Do we feel like we should do a round of intros or just hit, hit the ground running? Let's just get into it. Awesome. So, so there's, um, yeah, so last week on the community call, we ran over ABC++, Sergio gave a presentation, and um, just for a quick recap, uh, the first two phases of ABC++ will be coming uh, to Tendermint 037, and those two phases are prepare proposal and process proposal. So for a quick TLDR, um, prepare proposal is essentially when a proposer is about to propose a block, it asks the application, hey, are these transactions okay to be included in, in the block that I'm about to propose? And if so, then it passes it and uh, proposes it to the network. If not, the application can choose to modify some of the transactions, and there's a specific API for that. Um, and then the second phase is process proposal. So essentially, the validators currently in Tendermint cannot see what is included in a block when they vote on it. And so process proposal allows the application and the validator to say, okay, is this block valid or is this block invalid? And so those would be the first two phases that would be coming. And I think this is a good point to open the floor to anyone who wants to like talk about potential design um, within the application or um, if Sergio, you feel like I'm missing anything on the API. Um, actually, that was pretty complete, but I would like to add a couple of things, very short. The first one is that we have decided that the prepare proposal interface that you guys are going to have is going to be the final one. So don't get scared if you see a particular struct that has vote extension information. That vote extension information is reserved and it's going to be nil until finalized block, sorry, until vote extensions are included. Okay? So this way, we are not going to be releasing two versions of prepared proposal when we already know the final shape of it. Of it. The only caveat you need to bear in mind is that is is just that is whenever you look into the, you know, the remember prepared proposal. I mean APIs and ABCI. Uh, they have the request and the response. There is always a request and, and a response, and they are different. So the request part, you will see when you navigate through it that there will be a structure that contains vote extension information. The release we're going to do in 037, that vote extension information is always nil. Okay. And the second thing I wanted to add, I forgot. Sorry. Uh, before jumping to design, I think the question should be um, for the design stuff like, what is the feature? Like, okay, well, the set of features, what is the uh, minimum thing like we want to make? Uh, supported for API++ and SDK. And uh, to me, I think the answer is like obvious for what, what is the first thing uh, is like app defined mempool and everything else is a later problem. Like, you know, there's there, there's like batch, opt, you know, batch optimizations per transaction compression, et cetera. Like, but I, I don't see a world in where that's like the MVP thing you do uh, or like, or that's like deploying in sub six months whereas i think app find mempool is a thing that like could probably get in chains like immediately because people are excited about it so my i just sort of disagree with this thesis um i think you need app to find mempools and plus the ability to annotate transactions like you need a annotation field in the in the message um where you're able to like put information into the message that when the message is passed to deliver TX, that information is sort of goes between deliver like the like is essentially like a message bus between uh, 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 prepare proposal and uh, message delivery. I think you need this in order to do 
the like in memory matching for do IDX. Hey, why didn't wait? Uh, so I, I actually no, I don't understand. Uh, like prepare proposal is a type of generic function. Uh, like well, why can't I just who who is the initiator of this metadata and who's the consumer? Like uh, I, I'm making the claim that like the MVP should be that uh, you have in base app. Uh, I just have this method I can run where I say like application. And uh, what I want to have the flow to be is that as an app, I can uh, make some, uh, I, I can you know, prepare my block however I want and then define some validity conditions of transaction data. And then that, that's what gets proposed in that order. And then process proposal can check that order. But you, you have the annotations like from the transaction message type. message needs to have fields in it that or like a field in it that you can information into from uh 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 from prepare proposal right okay, so, so that that's you know, my like core thesis that's like like that's my mental model so there's two ways to do that you like transaction data you can bundle it in the transaction struct or you can make a second part of the block data for like proposer defined witness uh, I like would assume that, that if you yeah. have that proposer to behind witness, what part of pro, like what part of, like the of, of the like base apps of like the sequence does does that get called into and like is that does that get like where does that like long lived context information be available when you're doing when you're processing like when you're processing transactions in the block? Uh, you, you, you can imagine a block data, right? Uh, so, so I see that Bitcoin did this right uh, with, with SegWit, where I mean, detailed SegWit are stupid, so maybe that's a bad thing to say. Uh, but uh, you, you have your transaction data that you know uh, for transactions, then you can have a second blob in your app defined block struct, because as far as time is concerned, a block is just bytes. But then it comes to the app, I, I JSON or sorry, I, I, I decode it. Currently, we decode to a list of transactions. I think we should decode it into two separate blobs. One is transaction data. Second is proposer defined like uh, defined details, uh, where that eventually will include probably like aggregate signature data or uh, like just proofs, or in this case, like proposer def uh, defined additional metadata. Uh, and then this can still be done at an app level initially. We don't need to have interfaces at the transaction or interfaces to the transaction and module level can come later. You want is like a, a block struct that you can, uh, app can define like, uh, an app can segment the block for in, in according to its struct. And then uh, I'd say put this extra metadata in like its own, uh, field, but still be like fully app level, like don't try to make, I'm like pretty concerned about just the overhead of trying to make transaction level encapsulations without like clear MVPs. So I think this is like the central debate of like how we do this. Um, I can see either way working. I just like kind of also want to know from the SDK team's point of view, like what, what will be a cleaner integration? My, my internet was in and out. Uh, so maybe someone who heard the entire conversation from the SDK's point of view can speak on that. Can you reframe your, can you reframe your question, Zaki? Like, are you referring to like implementation details? Like, so is the cleaner thing to have essentially process proposal like you call process well i'm trying to understand actually like what like like this is what i don't understand dave is like if you're sticking this blob of data in the block there isn't an abci method that passes that blob to the application so like when does the application get the blob hey, no, no no what do you mean uh, it's just it's it okay so prepare proposal sets the block data 
So are you saying you want you want metadata that's not gossiped? That's a very different proposal. I, the metadata I think. be gossiped. Like it should be it's like in the block parts, right? Yeah. yeah. But so, like so if it's in the my block my mental data, model of like after commit, like after you or after uh 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 like the block is finalized and like like tendermint is complete, then you have this like what ABCI method passes that finalized data to the application? But this is what deliver block is. Okay, so both process proposal and and execution get the entire block data. Like as far as I mean, Tendermint has raw bytes. It has block data bytes. Application receives block data bytes and decodes to do whatever the hell it wants. But isn't that a bigger change than like and a less MVP change than like using uh 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 like adding the like adding the data to the transaction like annotating the like the SDK dot message structs that are like passed to the application and like making the data available there? Uh no, no, that requires changes to how you do like hashing and signature verification. That's way more complicated. Uh, in my view, like you just ignore the you ignore. Well, okay, it's true. Uh, yeah, it, 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 it's only been like three I, times this in the last week that ignoring fields and tender bit hashing has bitten us. Yeah. I would rather not have to modify messages if possible. Okay, so then does um, deliver block essentially? mean that the SDK no longer is doing begin block, end block, begin block, deliver TX, end block. It's just doing deliver block, and it sort of has to map all of the, that into base app. Yeah, so in, in, not in an, in all 37, it won't happen. In all 37, we still have deliver block, uh, sorry, begin block, deliver TX a uh, number of times, and then end block. We are not touching that part. So I think what you do is SDK side, you simulate uh, deliver block of like, uh, you could just cache all the, uh, like receive all the transactions uh, from deliver TX and then rebuild your block data to then, uh, uh, like then parse all the transactions into uh, your block, your actual typed block struct. It, it is this annoying hack to go from like array array transactions to or array array byte to properly semantic block data. But, um, it, I do think that's like the uh, I just don't think that that's like a big hack. I think it's just an annoying detail. So the, the the role of finalized block was that, but this is kept out. Has been kept. Otherwise, we cannot make it. It's been kept out of uh, the next release. So we need to come up with a way to to you know to keep keep on doing begin block, deliver the extend block. But this is what we you guys will have at the end of the, you know when, when we release. While simultaneously supporting prepare and process proposal, right? Yes. Wait, 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 what's, yeah. wait, what's process proposals? Process proposals is giving array array bytes to the SDK, right? That's a good question. I don't know. Is it? Can you restate, please? So. Tendermint thinks of a block is I, I always said Tendermint thinks of a block as just bytes. That was wrong. Tendermint thinks of a Tendermint thinks of a block today as array array byte. In process proposal, is, is that's how it's communicating the block data to, to the SDK? Uh, I have to check the detail of this spec. You give me three minutes, I can pull it up. The reason your direction that you're going, Dave, confuses me is that process proposal runs on blocks that are not finalized. Runs before finalization. Correct. Figure out is how we get metadata from prepare proposal to the to post finalization processing of the SDK. So, so this is an abstraction break. So what you described before was proposer included data. Not that's now now what does proposer include that could be metadata? Uh, like so we should separate out cleanly. Is this data being gossiped in a block? If yes, it's just part of a block. If no, then uh, then it's much more complicated. Like, we don't, 
I still don't understand, Dave. Like, we don't just give the block to the application. We call begin block with arguments. We call end block with arguments. We call uh, 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 deliver TX with arguments. Mm -hmm. Right? We don't just pass, like, bytes to the application. And this, uh, like, this is the point that Sergio is making. We don't do that. So the data has to be passed either in begin block, end block, or or uh, 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 the, like the SDK dot messages. So these are all asynchronous, right? Like, uh, like you could imagine a world in which uh, you executed. So the question is, how do you convert the tenement array array byte to your SDK defined block script? Tenderment currently communicates. How, how, the, how is it done? How is it done currently? So to, today we have the begin block, deliver TX, end block. I mean, this part is not going to change in the next release. That's what I'm trying to just. I mean, this is not prepared process proposal, so that part won't change. So uh, the SDK should right. be working as it is working today. So uh, I guess my claim is you could make deliver block the, the deliver block API is an api shim in either direction from like you know uh, of uh i how do i simulate deliver block in the sdk um okay well first i do begin block okay just kind of cache this or just just run it uh, as we do today okay, then um i do a bunch of many delivered transactions i don't need a synchronous response for every delivered tx from tenderment so then what i do is i um just receive the, uh, there is two ways to do it. One is the easiest way is actually like, you, you just tell, you make prepare proposal. Well, just not uh, prepare proposal. Uh, what does it do? You have many transactions, you produce an array array byte. So what you can do then is you, you idea one, okay, instead of you make your array array byte, just like ignore the first array, just make it as a single entry of serialized your block data. So then you have one delivered text call from Tendermint. That delivered text call is just badly named at this point, but it's uh, really like giving you the entire data. So, so you can simulate, this is my understanding, okay? Um, I'm not trying to get into the logic of the SDK because I don't know it, just from, from southbound. So uh, what you, Dave, is saying is that you can actually kind of shim Begin block, deliver TX, deliver TX, end block into one single thing that appears to be sort of a finalized block as a shim. Is, is that what you mean? Yeah. That, okay, uh, so that's possible. The only problem I see, uh, if it is a problem, is the um, data hash, the re sorry, the resource hash. You know that every end block is supposed to receive whether the, the transaction succeeded or not. So you, if you are caching all of them, you lose that that say that um, that data in, in in the in the header. I don't know if you see what I mean. Yeah, I think you I think you'd still keep them. I think everything would stay the same as is. Um, it's just like uh, because I think finalized block returns uh, an array of events um, on top of like response response deliver TX, and so we would just populate um, the finalized block events with the events that would have been admitted in begin block and end block. The only thing here is the clients won't be able to differentiate it, um, if it happened before the block or after the block unless we put an identifier in the event itself. That's, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, also, you lose the Merkleization of gas wanted, gas used fields and code fields, where that's all yeah, that's in the SQL response. That's exactly um, where I was trying to so I don't think anyone's ever used that Merkleization. The the last block hash? No, no, no. Um, so uh, the the result, uh, the TX results hash. The fact that it's Merkleized, you can open up a transaction ten had gas used, gas wanted code. So maybe that matters to IBC queries. I don't know. Yes, you're right. That is thing I didn't think about. That would break IBC queries. Uh, that you remove that Merkle. If that's how IPC queries work. I'm not sure if anyone here is working on IPC queries. But anyway, this is not for next release, huh? Very, very, very mind. Yeah. 
so um, kind, of, kind of take two steps back unless it like has overlap with prepare and process proposal um, uh, to kind of to kind of yeah go back to prepare and process proposal here um, there's app defined mempool and then there's like transaction metadata um, that Zaki was saying um, and I think that's when we deviated to finalize block. Well, so the the core question is that Zaki's point is that it's uh, the answer just is that like how do you communicate the entire block struct? Um, where if the decision's like, do I add more data to every transaction and figure out a way to do that that way, or do I switch to a block wide view? Um, where the goal is like, yeah, I guess it depends on. I, I I do think it's long term the goal to have a block wide view. Uh, I mean, and uh, bro, actually, long term probably both. You want a long uh, block wide view and a per transaction edit. I think a per transaction edit is like hard to make interfaces for right now, is my view. Um, until we have like something that wants to do both the additive case and the like subtractive case from data, like you know, compress out witness data. Uh, whereas I think the block wide view is like an easier is an easier abstraction. Uh, I mean, some other people might like, disagree. Uh, I don't know. Oh, but then the problem with the block wide view is, okay, how do we make that work until uh, while Tendermint is still communicating in the array array transaction? So array array byte instead of just one byte slice. I mean, so one one question is, like, do we ever? So it sounds like the problems to me if, if just like serialize all app data into one into one byte size of tenement things in this one transaction. Like the only problem with that is how does that affect the rest of the ecosystem um, of like mint scan uh, relayers, uh, basically indexers and relayers. Is, is this a correct view? I think the more I think the indexers would be fine because like um, the SDK would return one delivered TX response with like let's say twenty uh, uh, events for twenty transactions, um, and so it'd be admitted the same. The the only hard part here would be like um, clients like explorers wouldn't like indexing. Um, doing like a TX search for by TX hash would be a bit complicated. Oh, I mean, that's pretty important. Yeah. I mean, but we actually have never made an answer for how it's going to work with deliver block either. But with deliver, uh, with deliver block, um, you still, let's say if prepare proposal has 20 transactions and a deliver block is delivering 20 transactions. And each of them with their own unique uh, set of events. Oh, does Deliverbot have an array, a slice of delivery tax responses? Uh, yeah, so I believe you guys mean finalize block, just to make sure. Yeah, fin finalize block. Uh, yes. So finalize block yes. contains an array of um, a new, a newly defined record. I don't. I think it was called exec tx result. The name was a little bit convoluted because there were some collisions. But anyway, there is this. Um, Exact TX result where, where, it, where it contains the code, the gas wanted, etc. per transaction. And so you have an array of that. Okay. And then mm -hmm. you have events outside that, outside that list, you have events that are the ones that used to refer to begin block and end block. I don't know if that clarifies. Where's the transaction hash go for indexing by transaction hash? That that'd be um Uh, I guess I uh, guess that kind of like now I have another question in my head. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. It, I'm trying to think if we want to dive into this question or not, or just because it's like if our short-term goal is an app-defined mempool, 
and we're making the assumption we will not be modifying transactions when it is in the in the app defined mempool, then I think the assumption that the TX hash within Tendermint is a safe thing to do TX search by. But I think the moment we start like modifying transactions is where it gets complicated with like TX search by TX hash. So uh, okay, maybe maybe we should frame, reframe the MPP goal of app defined mempool to be um only okay the, the there's kind of three things you can do you can remove data uh but like aggregation etc you can add uh or okay what are the what are the things we could do there's remove data per transaction there's add data per transaction add data for the whole block control uh and then app defined like inclusion and ordering control uh is this the right framing of like the five things like we, we could be doing here I, I would say yes. OK, so then, uh, so then I, OK, my, my, I think I have I'm going to Sorry? I have, I have two questions to, to your explanation, Dave. When you say you add to the transactions, I believe, just to make sure, I'm just make sure, making sure I understand. When you say uh, adding metadata or something to transactions, you mean that at the application level, the transaction format will change, but this will still keep be, being opaque to the mint. Is, 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 is that correct? It's, Yes. And so I, you, you imagine I have, imagine I have like gossip, uh, you know, you have gossip transaction form one, and then state machine process transaction form two, and only I only, uh, no, no. How I transform between those two is either I remove data or add data. This is the case Saki was talking about adding data, but I could also remove data, which is like opt, uh, which is like optimization use cases. Good, and that, that is something that when you basically deliver the block back to respond, reply with the block back to Tenmin, and then Tenmin circulates it, and it comes up to your process proposal, you can verify it only with the data that you put into the block, right? Yes, yes. Thank you. And then my second question, when you say app-based mempool, I would like to make sure I understand what you mean. Are you kind of trying to pick up the transactions from CheckTX, or you are expecting prepare proposal to give you the whole contents of the mempool every time? Uh, it would have to overgive me contents. I mean, I, I think the the short term is like just overgive contents, and longer term we just queue it all outside. So, so you are thinking of having all that soft at prepare proposal, nothing, nothing related to CheckTX. CheckTX would be kept as a Say um, gate into the mempool, right? Into yes. the into the ten minute mempool. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, this is clear now. Thanks. Sweet. Okay. So yeah, when I initially said that there's like these five things, I thought I, I guess what I really meant is like I thought the clear MVP is is uh, make uh, control over inclusion and uh, uh, and ordering the first thing, no, rather than like and Zaki uh, and I guess uh, I frame it now is like Zaki saying that. Uh, for DYDX, actually, we should make um, we should make two things part of the priority. One is how do I add content per transaction. Two is how do I uh, how do I uh, do inclusion and or and uh, inclusion ordering. Is this a correct framing of Zaki? Yeah, that's my understanding of the two of, of like what the two priorities are. Okay, so then okay then then you're right that like what I had in mind. Uh, was really around inclusion and ordering of like ways to do that. And then uh, I was not, uh, I, I do think that adding transaction metadata, like, yeah, we, th there's, if we wanted to do it, uh, if we want to do it pre having a clean API to make block segment to data, I think you don't, I think you don't add a field type of transaction. I think you should make a wrapper. Uh, you, you could wrap the existing SDK at TX. To be the least API break way. I think one of the other ways we should consider is having just a blob of data that we include in we add a field to begin block and we like put that data in in the in a field in begin block. That means that the so I mean I think it's a feature for Tendermint to to like convert Tendermint thinks of a block as like an app part of a block as like array array byte uh, right now. After ABCI plus plus, Tendermint thinks of a block as array byte of block data, and then like row extension data. This is the app app defined part. I think that's a feature for Tendermint to like be fully opaque. 
versus having prepare a proposal communicate a segment of block data to get threaded into begin block. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely share that sentiment of like tendermint being treated opaque or keeping the data opaque to tendermint. Um, uh, so just just to clear up my understanding, if if we went with the route that like adding the metadata to begin block to be sent to the app, then the metadata has to be separate from uh, the transactions in the block in the in the data field. And then at the end, the begin block would send that up. So uh, I guess the reason I wanted to focus on ordering and inclusion was because you can leave transaction bytes for now unmodified. Where the thing yeah. I'm worried about once we start modifying transaction bytes is that like this is clearly a thing we have to do. Uh, like just we have a lot of questions we have to answer. Like how do you want transaction hash to work? How do you want uh, this? You have many consumers that same API. So then like you have to think about the interface like. I want to delete data from transaction, add data to a transaction, or, or uh, like, aggregate. So I mean, we can make a claim that like we're explicitly not going to support all of these. Like we're not going to make an interface that supports all these use cases and only the adding data per transaction. Which then, I, then I think what Zach was saying initially does uh, does make sense. It's kind of like how do we want this interface to break or not? Like I, I do think we'd be in an unfortunate world if we like long term communicated metadata in the same struct versus like a separate uh, like segment style thing. Yeah, I think that I think that makes sense. Um... So the the let's go ahead. Zaki, what's what's your view of the right long term? Is it do you, do you think my that view, like no no my view is that like we have to have an unstable API for this in the in the like between O three seven and let's say O three eight. Right? Like before like when we're partially through ABC I plus plus, I don't see how we can have a finalized API um okay. for for the per transaction data. Like um, and like, okay. honestly, ideally we learn a lot from like users like do IDX and like what, what, what problems they run into and whatnot. And like, you know, because there's like Evmos, like there's like two obvious, there's two obvious candidates. Like one is Evmos, the other one is, uh, uh, DYDX who could use this in production and like get us actual production feedback as to like, and then like we can work, so we can use that to like inform the final API for actual use. But like we should never, we should tell everybody this is an unstable API, and it'll break in the next release. So wait, sorry, what, can you explain why does Evmos? Why would Evmos be a candidate for adding data to metadata transactions? Because you could add the like you could you could like pre-execute the transactions, um, and then like actually add the amount of gas consumed. But why would I need to? Why would I need to do that? What I could do instead is in my ordering logic, I execute everything, get the gas used. Then I just propose a block with the composed correct sum of gas used. Yeah, but you need to tell deliver TX how much gas you are committing to actually it being actually using, and then be essentially like uh, uh, slashable if it cons if when you go to execute it consumes more gas than that. That's process proposal does that. In process proposal, I could also execute the block in Evmos's case. Would do that. Do that. No, process proposal. Okay, process proposal would allow you to pre-execute every transaction before committing it, and then only commit if that pre-execution was successful, which does require you to pre-execute non-finalized transactions that, like, non-finalized blocks that, like, could be not finalized. Yes, yeah, so you just never commit to state. Right. Like, this, like, sticks it in, like, essentially, like, a fork choice rule in process in process proposal. Mm -hmm. And like I don't know whether or not the right answer is to stick it in a fork choice rule and process proposal or whether or not to have the uh, 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 or like just to allow committing and then slash the validator if they lied. Because it like it will produce like you'll get like I'm pretty sure you will end up with like net faster blocks in the latter case. And like it's very much like a weird it's like a weird edge case that you can just slash for um, if I was designing the system. 
no, well, uh, wait. why wouldn't I? I I think whether it uh, whether it provides more. That's a question of like how you do the commit I'm API. Just, I'm just like, I'm just trying to like tell stories about like different use cases for having metadata in prepare proposal. I I don't like the the most clearest one to articulate is the DYDX in this case. Yeah, that, that does make sense. Uh, okay then. Yeah, uh, I I do think the FMS case is is different from how we do it. I I, I, I I'd be down to execute twice the MVP and then fix it in uh fix it with better synchrony handling. So so if I might intervene Outside. here with my with uh, with uh, you know the my perspective so. Um, I just checked, and begin block contains the blocks hash. So if you want to do immediate ex execution in the way Zaki was suggesting, you can do it in O37 already, in the sense that you will get prepare proposal. You can exec fully execute your all your transactions or reorder them while you are executing them. Process proposal will have to do the same when they when they receive the the block, and then basically you can keep that state some of like candidate because you don't know whether it's going to be finalized or not. And then when you get begin block, you compare the hash that you get with the ha you know the hash of the block that you get in prepare proposal or in process proposal with the hash that you're getting in the begin block. And if they con if they match, you, you just don't need to execute. You you just check that all the de delivered TX that you're getting are actually matching the transactions are actually matching you. But as a sanity check, you don't even need to do that. So I guess I guess just for clarification, um, this is still delayed execution. This is an immediate execution as you're describing it. Yeah, you're executing. Uh, you're still you maintaining tenement offset. It's just that when yeah. you execute during. When, yeah, when do you yeah, yeah. technology? Okay, awesome. Um, okay, so, so then yeah, I guess it is pretty reasonable. Then I mean, uh, I, I guess we could. Uh, Add do a wrapped transaction. Uh, they can do two things. You can do a wrapped transaction and a uh, inclusion. So I guess two options, right? What one is wrapped transactions? Uh, is just just do wrapped transactions with MVP. Second is also control inclusion and reordering. For the FMOS case, uh, you you need both. Though also uh, it's also questionable if you well you, for FMOS case you need for sure inclusion and reordering. It's questionable if you or it's like a design choice for. Uh, you offer six hashing or not, um, which I guess is a re actually pretty reasonable like, design space. Um, then for DYDX, you probably need both. Uh, this is, is this right, Zaki? Yes, you need both. Okay, so then, uh, okay, I, I guess if this is the world we want to make the MVP, then uh, there's, uh, I, I, I guess I, I'd still advocate for an app defined uh, like API for uh, adding to uh, like adding metadata transactions rather than a uh, rather than a app per transaction level, just because uh, I don't know, per transaction level is just, like a over commit to an interface that we're going to certainly break. The, the the one the one you're describing is more of a global design. Yeah, so, uh, like imagine uh, at, at that level, I I, uh, so I also feel like a lot of things you want to do here are global properties, or like multi-transaction properties are isolated. So what what I what you could do then is you could make a function that an app function that's uh you know prepare and like prepare handler chain, where you take in all of the transactions, and you as input, you produce more transactions as output, but then the transactions you produce can be like wrapped with other data. So this has, this has the unfortunate right. problem of transaction hash. How do you deal with transaction hashes? Yeah, I think the transaction hash is going to kind of be the open open question mark here. Um, this is transaction hash. This is the reason why segment is the correct design. But can we add? But I don't know how we're going to make this work with uh, 
for you doing like the segment style designs. Um, yeah, that's definitely I'm not thinking of it. So from my understanding on the API of prepare proposal, like you would send a byte blob and then you ask the application if it's been modified, if it's been deleted, um, if it stays the same via like a part above enum. And then it's like, technically like the core transaction is unmodified, but it's like, it's in a new wrapper. So, to, so it's like the possibility of like the TX hash changes now. Yes, uh, like putting a wrapper has this problem. Um, you could, uh, I guess you could make it, you could duplicate every transaction and then do something hacky outside of like, you have this first transaction be this like dummy blob that just communicates metadata for the next one to get around transaction hashes. And the core problem yeah. is that like, transaction hashes should only contain the immutable components and like the, the component that the uh, that the transaction submitter like has that won't won't get edited. So even like not even signatures, for instance. Uh, but then and then we do process when you edit it at the block verification level, you can delete stuff that uh, they had uh, that that was if it's a non transaction hash, this is like similar segment, and you can add stuff to a new metadata blob or new new like area. There's, um, so on prepare proposal, like if we were to return wrapped transactions, does, do the t transaction hashes stay the same within the block right now, um, as before, or no. do you guys rehash the transactions? Transaction hash is defined by tenderment and it has to be done by tenderment from what it receives from prepare proposal. If you change the transaction, if you mm. just one one byte, the hash will be different. I mean, it's the hash of the array of bytes, yeah. so it's okay to us. Yeah, I mean, in, in a longer yeah. term world where you have transaction hashes be defined by an app that can remove uh, remove malleable data, uh, that goes away. It, it's really a client problem, not uh, right now. I, I guess, but it, could, I, I guess it's actually fine if the transaction hash is different. Is this fine for DYDX and uh, and Evmos? Uh, well, okay, uh, I guess, I, if if the transaction hash hash is different from what it was in the mempool, but like what is being indexed is like the modified transaction hash. So when you do a search based off the the, the only problem is when you are submitting a transaction, the transaction hash that you receive back that you usually run a query off of won't be the valid transaction hash unless you wrap it before broadcasting it. Okay, so I guess in the that, DYDX space, the they should that. actually have already... It's already the like case? You already, can't, you, you already can't rely on the transaction hash that you submit. Uh, that you receive back from CheckTX. Yeah, that's that's malleable. Wait, why, why is that malleable right now? Uh, just because of some. Uh, I mean, there was there was some security patches that we made. There's some details with the the signature encoding. I think that a node could modify it while it's transmitting it, and that could change the hash. So you should rely on the signature that you. Well, it's not actually the signature. I think it's the pub key. There's something that's malleable. Amory, might. Do you remember what it is? Um, that causes that. Um, yeah, so I think it's fixed though since 043. I, like the before, like 044 or something. So before is um, like since the probe of encoding wasn't deterministic, you can malleate the transaction before like sending to a node and then change it the hash. So querying a TX by hash wasn't safe. So we added querying by signature. Um, but then it's fixed since 044, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0,
No, but it, it's still it's still an issue if you're using amino signing. So I think with amino signing, there's a number of different malleability possibilities. Um, nothing that can change the intention of the transaction, but definitely things that can change the hash. So, and that's why we recommended that indexing that query should always be done by signature because that can't be um, mutated. No, it's a goal of plus plus to get rid of the signatures. Uh, with with signature aggregation. Yeah, or Snarks. Oh yeah, yeah aggregation. Yeah. Uh. Oh, okay, for Zaki, for DOIDX use case, they can probably just query by limit ID, right? Like, if I can, they should just be able to make a new ID for every limit order, similar to centralized exchanges, for seeing when, or is that not right? Query by limit, they can query by some sort of ID, et cetera. I agree. Like, okay, so, so if DOIDX be okay with that, like, if, so, so if they're willing to make another index for whether things are included or not, then it's actually pretty easy. But like, I guess Aaron's points also that signature works, creasing triagation. Yeah, I think we just need to explain this to them. Okay, actually, I guess we could we could just say that if the MVP is no editing the signature, then you could just uh, just query by signature. In, index by signature does totally work until we later go. Uh, Let's okay. Um, so there's with the last ten minutes, just to um, finalize any like open discussions or any open questions we have. So um, there is agreement uh, that. App defined mempool for ordering and inclusion is needed. And then uh, uh, we want to include metadata alongside transactions. This, this could be a wrapper. Um, or, around the TX at the prepare proposal um, phase, right? Yeah. Um, then uh, TX hashes will be modified when being included in the block. Um, then here, I guess it's like we would rely on recheck TX to um, to remove the transactions from the mempool, right? Yes, that was always the case. Yeah. Okay. Optional. One compliment here, that is totally true, but here you so saw an application developer would have the choice of whether doing it on reject TX or even in like whenever, you know, you get it on process proposal again, that's like a second opportunity. So maybe in, the, in terms of the structure of the code, it might make sense to do it on one place or on the other on both, just um, as a I mean, heads up. I think the longer term is which is not even a hard workaround is just ignore the tenant mempool entirely, where you just on check TX, make a app side mempool. Yeah, oh, it, it, it becomes just a gossiping. Um, yeah, tenor, gossiping. tenor man just gossip of like communication transactions, app maintains just what is the list of uh, things I care about for uh, like actual for, for inclusion. Yeah. I, My understanding yeah, exactly. of the DYDX code structure is they uh, they just use check TX to populate their in memory database. Yeah, and then they'll call that and in, in, they'll they'll extract they'll get you know matches from that from uh, from the uh, they'll get matches from that from the uh, um, for the uh, when they propose prepare a block. Obviously, so they're basically already doing long for this. 
Yeah, perfect. Um, so they're already kind of doing the uh, app defined mempool. Um, but yeah, but I think, um, yeah, okay, so, so I think that's good. And I think that gives us enough, that gives us like the, what is needed for the kind of like ADR once it's, uh, once we start writing it. Um, interface is not stable. Uh, the agreement is that, uh, I would, yeah. I would like to add one last small comment. Um, I went mm -hmm. to the issue and I see that you are pointing like the, the, the spec you're pointing to is the master. Uh, I would add, so we're working on it. So in the next days we will have the final spec for the part that we're gonna release for us 37, right? But in the meantime, probably it's way less confusing probably to use the spec that is of the branch 036X than master, because master has had some other things added that are not, not even implemented in 036. So probably it's less confusing to read the spec uh, on of 036X until we have it ready on, on 037X rather than master. Thanks. Um, yeah, okay, I, yeah, it, I don't, are you saying it's confusing because people might assume that everything's coming in O thirty seven, or or is the spec um, changing? So, if you want more details, so the master spec has the same block execution logic that we never implemented. That is always like I know we will implement it one day, but today is not implemented. It's just in the spec, and O thirty six doesn't have that, so it has less noise. The only difference between O thirty six and the one that you guys are gonna have is that already the 36 specifies finalized block and board extensions that we don't have. So it's like the difference between the 36 and what we are going to release is way less than from master and what we're going to release. OK, yeah, we can um, we can repoint. Um, we can we, we can repoint that, yeah. Um, Thanks. And then the, the, the third point for that we have agreement on is that we will be explicit that the interface within the SDK will not be stable and it may break between releases, correct? So uh, what I think is like the breaking part, so, so I, I think what you do SDK side is we, we do the anti-handler training, like uh, of, uh, you anti-handler training of like this one function signature where the function signature is, uh, or sorry, prepare proposal and process process training. Function signature is like I take in context array transactions, block limits, and produce at the end an array of transactions. So that part is like rel should be relatively stable. Part that's going to be very unstable is any API for producing the modified transactions. Like deleting or reordering, easy. Um, this wrap transaction API might be something we deprecate later. Awesome. Um, Okay, awesome. I think that gives us a good starting point, gives the SDK team a good starting point to start putting together a ADR surrounding this. Um, and then I think it might make sense to have another call uh, next week, ideally, um, if we have the ADR up to just go with ADR in a group review session. And I'll share another doodle um, for next week time slots. How's everyone feel with that? Sounds good. Uh, okay, I mean, so I added uh, just the, the literal method signature. I think it it uh, it would be e uh, in yeah at the bottom of this the hack and D. The, I, I guess the, the the question here is like um, base up prepare block. This is something weird. This is something um, um, 
the transactions come in and then the anti-handler or where I guess that, that'll be, we'll, we'll talk about that in the ADR. Um, prepare block decorator. Okay, yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, and so we'll talk about that in the ADR more like uh, design and code related about how to, and, and if needed, uh, expose this to the modules, um, if they need to run some extra wrapper. Uh, takes metadata or if applications want to define it some other way um, and so that's the next thing i think we want we will seek feedback on okay i i still highly recommend just keep everything global not to make module defined semantics okay yeah i mean that that, that definitely makes sense especially since the, uh, the api won't be stable yeah uh, decorator is like similar to anti-handlers where a module can make its own decorators that we add, but so the decorators can composability, but not module defined. Yeah, that makes sense.